hello everyone my name is Bokis you're welcome back to my channel today's tutorial is going to be on a cold shoulder flare dress and trust me as I always say it is very easy you need on the average you need about two yards of fabric for that and trust me it will be okay so right now we'll go back to our work table and get started but do not forget to subscribe to our channel and you can also follow us on Instagram the key signature so let's get started I have my fabric on fold first I have to be sure the right and the wrong this is the wrong side so all I have to do is to fold you need the largest circumference of your body which is my hip measurement so you need that if I divide that, if I divide that by four that will give me 11 inches so you need about three or four inches more because it is a flare dress so I will just put it on fold this way. Can you see? I've been folded this way. And then this way. And then I can use my measuring tape to confirm that. Mm -hmm. The measurements, I will just place my measuring tape. After folding it, it stops here. So this can be used for the sleeve. So here I have about 15 and a half, so which is okay. My hip measurement is 11, so plus like 3 or 4. 1, 2, 3, or 4. So it's okay. Then the length of my dress is 43 inches. Just a little below my knee. You can have it above your knee, depending on how short or long you want it to be. But it is a short dress. So 43 is somewhere around here. So I will start here because my baseline will be somewhere around here. So I'm just going to make a straight line. So I will check. Here I have 44 and half so and i want for the three so that means this remaining one and half will be used for any allowance so i will use the total length of the fabric the next thing now is to insert half of my hammer this is the base for my measurement so half of my ham hole is eight and a half here then my waist is 16. my hip measurement is 24. And the length of my dress is 43 and the remaining will be for the hemming allowance all these points will be made into a straight line i now have the point into a straight line half of my hamper my waist my hip measurement and the length of my dress the next thing is to insert the three inches eight inches standard you should be familiar by that by now and in case you do not understand some of the things i'm saying just try to watch my video on how to make a basic body pattern. You would understand more there. So from this 8 inches standard, I will just come down by 1 inch. Then connect to the 3 inches point. So this is what I have. So from after this, I can insert my shoulder measurement. My shoulder, half of my shoulder measurement is 8 and half, which is here. Then I will place it on the chest line, which is here, and connect in a straight line. So this will be the hand hole line. So but before coming back to this, let's just insert our horizontal measurement. Like here, half quarter of my bust measurement is 10.5. I will just add half an inch to it to just make it a little bit free. So I have 11 inches here and then 1 inch for the hemming allowance. I will go over to my waist. My waist measure, quarter of my waist measurement is 9 inches. But I will make it 10 inches because it is a free dress. So that will be 10, which is what I have here. And then 1 inch for the side seam allowance. Then we'll go over to the hip measurement quarter of my hip is 11 inches what i mean by quarter of whatever circumference is this whatever your measurement is divided by four for instance my hip measurement is 44 divided by four that will give you 11 so that's what i meant by quarter of my hip so here i have 11 so i'll just add extra half an inch to it because it's a free top to make it 11 and a half then I will have the one inch aiming allowance. Let me just connect that so you can see how that looks. So this will be for hemming. This is the exact measurement and this is the allowance. And I will take my hip curve 
connect from the waist down to the hip. Having done that, as we said, it's a flared dress. Just take the measurement of your hip here. I used 11 and a half. I will just place that here. 11 and a half is here. So because it is a flared dress, you want to be able to walk freely and still have that flared shape. I will just add minimum of three inches to it because it is a little bit or almost on my knee area. But if it is a long gown, just add minimum of five or six inches to it. So since I just said I used 11 and half, so plus three inches or four, but let's just say three inches. So that will be 12 and half, 13 and half, 14 and half, which will be here. The next thing is to add the one inch hemming allowance, which is here. And I will connect the strip line. So you can see this from the chest line to the waist to the hip and down to this part. As I've said earlier on, this will be for the hemming allowance. You could always trim up the selvage area, but because I would hem it, I usually leave it at times. So what I would do now to make to give this flare effect, I would just come up by one inch. This is one inch here, and then take my hip curve this way and then I will connect from this one inch down to this area that's like half of your boss pan that should be the minimum of what you should do so I will connect from here down to this area so right now let's connect so this is what I have can you see the pole so I will be cutting it this way so just to the exact measurement and not the size same allowance Let's go back to the ham hole area. I will get half of this from the one inch in which we came down. Half of that is three three quarter. From there, I will come in by three quarter inch, which is here, and take my ham hole to finish that up. This is for the front and for the back. Let me see that was pretty easy. So for the neckline, for the depth, I will just make it six inches. Six inches is okay. And then for the width, I will make it four inches. So this is three. So the remaining one inch will be along this line. Because I want to have a V-neck but still curvy. So I will just place my ham hole this way. I will use this side of my ham hole. This is what I have. So for the back neckline, I will come down by one inch from here. And take my ham hole for and then connect this way. So now back to this play because we want it to be a cold shoulder. And you won't want to start leave your measurement here at your ex exact shoulder measurement because you don't want it picking out from your shoulder. So you could just go in by half an inch, three quarter, or even one. You could just leave the distance between the neck width here and here, just about two inches, depending on what you want. So how much you want it to come in totally depends on you. But on the average, at least you come in by half an inch or three quarter inch which is around here. Then I will take my ham cocoa to blend that in. Let me see what I did. And for the back, be this way. That is what we have. This was the initial one, but now it is here. The next thing is to have the shoulder allowance. Which half inch is it enough? The next thing now is to cut out the fabric and we go over to the sleeve. So I will start cutting from this curvy area. So this is the exact measurement. So here I will just make it straight. Let me see that. So the curve hangs here. And I keep cutting it out. 
what we'll do now is to cut the back ham hole first. So this is the new one. This was the initial one. So this is the dress. And also for the neckline, you cut the back neck first. back dress so as to finish the front neckline but do not forget to notch at the waist and also at the hip because this has to match when you are sewing and for the pockets let me quickly talk about that before moving forward so for the pocket you should just come down to attach the pocket i will show you how to cut that from your waist about five inches from your waist, just come down about five inches from your waist. So that would be where you will insert your pockets. You could do four depending on your preference, how high or low you want your pockets to be. So I will continue to remove the back piece and continue with the front piece. First I will finish up the arm piece since we are done with the dress remember it's a cold shoulder flare dress so what i will do now is to note where my cold shoulder sleeve will be attached so the minimum you could do is three inches because the sleeve itself will be hemmed so you don't need about to worry about that but if it will be normal sleeve that you have to hem then if you are using three, you will come up by half an inch because you have to finish it up with the bias strip with half an inch. But because this will be hemmed with elastic casing, so I won't forget about that. So the minimum you could do is three. You could even go as high as two inches, but three inches or four is better. But for me, I will make it four inches. So this is where I will attach it. Can you see this? So I will just note it on all the pieces. I could just notch. This is for the back. Be careful. This is the back. So I will notch somewhere around here. Can you see this? Then I can remove it. Go back to the front panel. Then notch. So with this, you already know where you will attach your cold sleeve. So we will put this aside to cut the sleeves. So right now, from my leftover fabric, this is what I have. So I will just put it on fold for the sleeve. The right side has to be facing each other. Please note that. So I will just fold it this way. Because this upper part is even. So this will be the starting point. Then measure 10 inches. Because for the sleeve, there will be a little gathers at the upper parts with an elastic band so for that case you know, I will leave about two inches or two and a half inches for that depending on the the width of the elastic you are using so that should be around here so and I want about seven or eight inches for the exact sleeve and I will need hand me allowance also for the lower part so I'll just make it 10 inches so 10 inches will be here Then I will make it into a straight line and then cut this off. Okay, this is what I have. So now my sleeve will be this way. Because of that elastic gathering at the upper part, I will just make that because it's on fold. So two inches is okay for that. So whatever I have, I'll have to add two inches to that. So for the sleeve, all I need is half of my ham hole. Half of my ham hole is 8.5. Then I will need one inch for the seam allowance that is to join it at the 
open ends. So that will be nine and a half. That is half of my hand hole, which is 8.5 plus one inch seam allowance. That is nine and a half. Then plus two inches. That will make it 11 and a half. So I have 11 and a half here. It's on fold. So I haven't done that. What I'll do now for this is this. I said I want two inches for the elastic casing, which is here. I will just note that and then take the back panel of my fabric and then I'll show you how to do that. So this is the back panel. And remember we said we want the coat sleeve to start from here. So this is the two inches for the elastic casing. So all we have to do is to place it here. So I would teach you the technique to do that. All you have to do is to insert your cap's height. I explained in detail how to calculate your cap's height and how to make a basic sleeve pattern. My cap's height is four inches, which is here. From here, remember this will be for the elastic. So four inches here, four inches here. I had to go into detail just to make you understand. Then make this into a straight line. After doing that, then I will place this this way. I'm using the back panel, please. So mm -hmm. I will just place it on the line. Make sure it is straight. So I'll place the dress in such a way that it is straight. Then all I have to do is pop it out. Just stop on this line. Can you see what I have? Then I will take my ruler and draw a straight line. Up. So right now, after making this straight line, so for my sleeve opening, my sleeve opening is 14 inches. So half of that is seven inches. But remember, we added nine inches to half of our ham hole because of the elastic gather. So I will add the two to the seven inches, which will make it nine inches. 9 inches, which will be here, then the 1 inch same allowance, then I will just connect from here. You should use the whole pan for that. Can you see? So I will take my scissors now and cut this way and this way. And decide to ignore this if you wish but that's just a normal basic sleeve so this is what we'll have so one will be for the so right now this is the sleeve so after finishing the elastic casing it will have something like this can you see that so by the time you use the elastic you have a gathered gathered sleeve like this so for the front ham hole, you could just trim a little off from here, but better still just ignore it because it is gathered, so it will cover up for that. So the next thing I will do now before, before cutting out the pockets, the, for the contrast in depth. Remember, it is a cold shoulder sleeve and it's starting from here. So when sewing, what you have to do is to join the shoulders, the half inch we left. So after joining the shoulders, you finish the neckline with a bias strip and then finish the hand hold with a bias strip stopping at where you want your coat sleeve to start. This is where we will attach this to the main body. So you finish this side with a bias strip. You open it up and finish it with a bias strip. So right now we we'll cut the pockets. Now I will just take my leftover fabric, make sure right side is facing each other and then I will fold this way. So you should fold about nine inches to 10 inches. So all I need is somewhere around here. So I'll place my hand this way. Can you see that? Because this, your hand has to go into your pocket. Make sure somewhere around here goes in. So then take your chop. Can you see that? So something like this, then I will cut it out. Okay. 
So these are the pockets. Can you see that? So one will be for this side and one will be for the other side. Right now I've joined the shoulders. Can you see? I joined the shoulders, then I finish the neckline and the handhold with a bias strip. Can you see? I finish the neckline with the bias strip. And remember we notched where we want our cold sleeve to start, which is here. So I finish that from this first notch, I finish it with a bias strip. So I will be adding the sleeve to this area. So for the sleeve, now, remember I left the two inches for the elastic casing, in which I will, I will sew in like this. Then remember the elastic, how do you determine the amount of elastic you need? Just take the measurement of your bicep and then divide it, divide it by two. Then you could minus half an inch or one inch from it, and that is okay. So what I will do next now is to finish this casing and add my elastic band. So now for the sleeve, can you see that? So I made the case, then I inserted the elastic, then I finish it up here. Can you see how it looks like? Then the lower part has been hem. So looking at this, I will join this to this. Can you see that? So starting from here. Can you see how it matches up? Can you see that matches up very well? So we will do that for the other side. And then you have your coat sleeve this way. Can you see that was pretty easy? So after that, then we'll go to our pockets and then we we'll hem our dress. So right now I've attached the sleeves. Can you see how it looks? So before joining the sleeve and the side, I will have to insert the pocket. And for the pocket, you will be joining it this way. Like this is one of the pockets. So this is the wrong side, this is the right side. So you have to place it this way. I've explained the pocket earlier on. From your waist, I said about five inch or five and a half or six, depending on how tall you are. That is where you start inserting your pocket. So this is my waist. So from my waist, I'll just do about five inches or five and a half. So five and a half for me is here. So five and a half. So then now we'll be placing right side on right side. And you see this way. So I will attach it this way. Take to my sewing machine and then sew in half an inch. After sewing half an inch, I will then open it up and then stop stitch to the pockets. Can you see that? Then I will do also to the right side. So I haven't finished the pocket. Can you see that? I've attached it. So the next thing I will do is I will top stitch this way to the pocket. Same thing with this. And after that, I will just place it as I've done. And then start sewing the seam allowance from here, from the sleeves, down. Then instead of going straight down, because of the pocket, you just go through this way this way and then you sew it down and then hem the lower part and you are good and this is the outfit we just made can you see it's so lovely and so so easy to make as i've always said just give it a try and share with us on our facebook group sewing innovation it is a lovely group whereby we share some illustration and ideas about different kind of outfit and do not forget to subscribe i remain your girl